What do a Methodist, an Episcopalian, and a Roman Catholic bishop have in common? While this may sound like the beginning of a bad joke, the answer is far from funny. All three are from Birmingham, Alabama, and have joined together across political and denominational lines to file a lawsuit against the state of Alabama over its new and exceedingly harsh immigration law, House Bill 56, which makes it illegal to transport, harbor, rent property to, or employ illegal immigrants. Not only are church leaders protesting this new law, but it has started an upswelling of protests from citizens in Alabama and across the nation of every creed and color. This new breed of anti-immigration law, starting most notably in Arizona, has opponents calling it Juan Crow Laws. Many correlations have been drawn to this new civil rights battle in Birmingham, the one that took place over 50 years ago, led by Martin Luther King and other civil rights leaders in that same city. What the House Bill 56 does, much of which has been cleared by the courts despite lawsuits, appeals, and its broad and vague language, is that it discriminates and takes rights away from not only illegal immigrants, but also Alabama's own citizens. HB 56 is damaging to the rights of citizens to reform charitable acts, it lends itself towards deliberate racial profiling, and it cripples the agricultural industry, which is a significant portion of Alabama's economy. I argue that this law, in its entirety, should be repealed. In Alabama, it is estimated that only about 100,000 people in population are undocumented immigrants. This is roughly 2% of the population, ranking Alabama number 36 out of 50 with the greatest undocumented population but yet Alabama finds itself with the harshest immigration law. This law that passed in June of this year prohibits almost everything which would harbor or shield an immigrant or encourage an immigrant to live in Alabama. Bishop Baker of the Diocese of Birmingham in a letter addressing the new immigration law states that, quote, an argument can be made that the federal government has failed miserably to control and regulate and implement a just and workable immigration policy. Laws such as this new one in our state are born out of frustration with this governmental failure. However, the church is not in charge of our borders. We do not determine who enters our country. But once immigrants are in our midst, the church has a moral obligation, intrinsic to the living out of our faith, to be Christ-like to everyone. According to Baker, church members would not be allowed to perform marriages or baptisms, provide financial material aid, give rights to church services or doctor's appointments, he states, in effect, that the law prohibits almost every activity of our Catholic social services. The law prohibits any services that any person would do to help an immigrant, and an exemption clause has been proposed to help, to help the churches have a loophole against this restrictions in the law. However, um, they said that this would create too large a loophole in the law and would not help and would um, would not help the religious. But the language of the bill is too broad and vague for certainty, and when it comes to the freedom of Christian citizens to exercise their religion, these leaders are not convinced by these assurances, especially considering how stringent and strict the bill is in general. Just try to imagine a state where a priest or a pastor or a social worker could go to jail for giving money for a family of five to buy groceries to feed their family with. It is not just certain church leaders up in arms against this bill. One of the biggest concerns of this law that have people all over the nation protesting vehemently is the racial profiling allowed in the bill. In a state infamous for its civil rights struggle, this new law strikes uncomfortably close to its racist history of the past. What Alabama has struggled to get past the last 50 years seems to have cropped up again in a new form. Congressman Gutierrez, a Democrat from Illinois, who is at the forefront of the opposition, responded to reports that all manner of transactions involving illegal immigrants in the U.S. have been criminalized in Alabama, stating that when it is considered that a felony and deportable offense for a mother without immigration papers to sign her U.S. citizen children up for a library card, clearly we have a national civil rights emergency on our hands. The exact language of the law states, quote, to require the verification of the legal status of persons by law enforcement officers under certain circumstances. This terminology is extremely vague, and the rest of the bill does little to clarify. There are certain restrictions to asking for identification, such as in a medical emergency or national disaster relief. But if a person pulls over for a routine traffic violation, does not have their driver's license, they can be detained if the police officer believes them to be here illegally. Obviously, the only way a police officer would have this decision <coughs> would be based on how that person looks. 
According to Representative Bobby White of Virginia, quote, when two people are stopped for speeding and they've forgotten their driver's license, the Hispanic person can go to jail while the white person will show up in court and show their driver's license. According to an article by the Huffington Post, this means that, quote, as a law stands, police are allowed to racially profile anyone they suspect of being illegal. All contracts with undocumented immigrants are invalid, such as child support, leases, or jobs, and it is now a crime for undocumented immigrants to apply for a driver's license or even a job. This law also makes immigrants extremely fearful and hesitant to go to the police with any information regarding a crime. The effects on the safety of citizens and aliens are alike are clear when witnesses are afraid to go to the police for fear of being detained or arrested. While some may think it is fair to make not only the immigration status of aliens illegal, but also almost every single action they try and do, I personally do not want to live in a state or country where we are asked to show proof of citizenship when we are trying to apply for a job or rent an apartment solely based on the color of our skin or how we speak. When writing this bill, Alabama clearly did not heed the lessons learned from Georgia's similar anti-immigration law. In Georgia, millions of dollars worth of crops were left rotting in the field with no people were coming up to harvest them. Alabama has an agricultural industry of $5.5 billion annually, and it is still fairly early to know what the full effects of this law will have on it, but based on what has happened in neighboring Georgia and preliminary statistics, it is not hard to see a pattern and estimate the ultimate result. In Georgia, a survey done of 230 farmers done by the Agricultural Commission expected that Georgian farmers needed more than 1,100 workers at some point over the rest of the season to replace the workers that left, with only a few thousand coming up to replace them. It is estimated that Georgia lost $140 million in their spring and summer harvest alone due to their new anti-immigration law. A study done in Alabama on the recent effects of the law on agriculture by Vote Latino, an activist group for Hispanics, shows that there is only a 10% success rate of busing employed workers to farm fields to replace the workers who left. And those replacements are significantly less productive. Unemployment is high and people need jobs. Why then is it so hard to get replacements for all the fearful immigrants who have fled the states? The answer is simple. The typical farming job pays about $8 an hour with little or no benefits. So to get more farmers, work so to get more workers, farmers will have to raise wages, and it is simply cheaper to let the crops rot in their fields. It is clear from, this, from these statistics that the send them home philosophy of lawmakers is not a viable, sustainable, or workable solution to the problem. This is not an issue that is sim as simple as get them out, and it has detrimental effects to a large sector of Alabama's economy. In summary, House Bill 56 in Alabama is a violation of citizen and human rights allows for racial profiling and is detrimental to the economy. The law was written to address an issue that is not much of a problem in Alabama and takes away the rights of citizens and immigrants alike and appears to have no redeeming qualities. Yes, undocumented immigration is an issue that needs to be dealt with for social, economic, and security reasons. Sustainable and humane solutions to this problem need to be formulated, proposed, debated, synthesized, and put into practice. HB 56 is not that solution. It is a classic repeating of history. When the economy is down, we look for a scapegoat to place blame or release frustration. This bill is all wrong. It is vague, offensive, discriminatory, and detrimental to everyone in the state of Alabama and the entire United States. Dr. Martin Luther King once wrote that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. This harsh form of law has already spread from Arizona to Georgia and is now infesting Alabama. But I believe its repeal can halt this form of legislation from infiltrating any other part of our nation.